Good morning, gang. It's Saturday, the 9th of July, 2016. Yeah, I've just got the new Harrods magazine. Now, no, I don't necessarily order anything from this, okay? Just want to point that out. I've never ordered anything, but it is nice to flick through here and see what wonderful, expensive wares we have. Now, how about your children at home? Anyone got teenagers at home? Anyone got teenagers? My nephew, for example, who's 19 who lives in Woodall Spa, he won't think of anything of spending 130, 140 quid on a pair of trainers. A pair, 140 quid, you think that's bad? Look at this, in today's Super Soar Away, Harrods Magazine, there's Kickstart, that oh, I can, do you know I can't, oh, I haven't got my glasses here. Oh, big mistake. I know why that is, because I took the monology with me. Oh well, we'll have to try and get by. Uh, the need for super... <laughs> Can't see it. <laughs> super Lux sneakers look set to run and... Oh, it doesn't matter about all that old crap, does it? Uh, anyway, how much do you think these are? I'm going to cover the price. Any idea how much those ordinary grey uh, 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 trainers are? Any idea? 750 quid for a pair of trainers. There you go. How's that? How's that? But people like to <coughs> wear stuff. Don't know, just because of the just because of the um uh the label on there or something else. Now I did have a bag here lined up for you as well. I can't find it now. Where's that little bag? I do look through here and I think, oh I'd like to buy my niece that or I'd like to buy my sister that sometimes, you know. But not at these prices. One minute. One minute, one minute. No, I can't find it. Oh how annoying. I did have that page folded over then. And um it's dip it, this, oh, there it is. It's a little Eddie, is it Eddie Parker? The playful clutch bags from Eddie Parker can now be personalised in English or Arabic. £1,599 for that little bag. Look at that. That tiny little bag there. £1,599 for that, dear. God, you couldn't even get more than a couple of packets of fags in there, could you? Lucky, <coughs> lucky to get two packets of cigarettes in there if you were lucky. Tiny little things. Although I did, my favourite item was this. It's a graph. Now that is, uh, it says, things aren't always what they seem at graph. The wings of the sapphire princess butterfly watch open to reveal a mother of pearl dial. Well, how much is this one? I'll just show you that there. Can you see the butterfly thing there? How much is that? How much? You might have to sell your house. Hundred and thirty thousand pounds for that. If you're up north, you'd have to sell your house. If you if you're down south here, you could buy four with that. <laughs> now mind dear. Now we've got lots and lots of birthdays today, so I'm going to do those now uh, because uh, obviously I haven't been doing them since Tuesday. I think Tuesday was the last one. I think Tuesdays were the last one we did. So I've gone through my list of birthdays because I don't like to feel like anyone's been left out. Do you know what I mean? We like to be all together, just all together, just like in a tiny little room at Chariots, boys and girls. So here come the birthdays. I'll start. I'll start with Wednesday's birthdays. First of all, Stu Donnelly. Hello, sir. Stu Donnelly. If you want to know the time, ask a policeman. Stu Donnelly. Um, it's been years since I saw you, sir. We used to go on um, Italy. We've been to Italy. I was DJing at this place in Italy at a, 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 a sun sunshine type holiday a few times. And Stu uh, came with his mates to a few of those. That's where I know him him from. Uh, happy birthday, sir. All right. Uh, Stephanie Kennedy. Ste Ste can't get the words out today. Stephanie Kenny. Looking beautiful for 40 years old. Happy birthday, Stephanie. I recognise your little face there. Oh, and Chai. Fantastic karaoke type singer, Chai who's been coming along and singing with me for a number of years now, actually. She's been, and I think, I'm just trying to think, I think she's been to every single venue that I've done karaoke nights at. Belushi's in Hammersmith, Camden, London Bridge and Shepherd's... Oh, you might not have been to the Shepherd's Bush. Not, not Shepherd's Bush. Uh, Fulham. That's gone now. That one's gone. I don't think you came to the Fulham one. Perhaps you'll correct me, Chai, if I'm wrong there. Um, but that one, uh, Central Station, you've been. The Golden Line, you haven't been to Sydenham yet, have you? No, but you've been to most of my places and she's a top, top singer. I'm sure you've seen them or seen Chai if you've ever watched our uh, live karaoke streams. 
Happy birthday, Chai, to you. Yes, oh, we got very exciting last night. Actually, Chai, you remember uh, that the, the, the Facebook Live picture is the wrong way round at the moment. Well, just before I started yesterday, I noticed there was a Facebook update. For, aha! Maybe they've sorted it out, and guess what? No, they haven't. It's still round the wrong way. Four updates now, and they still haven't sorted out the problem of the picture being the wrong way round, but never mind. Happy birthday, Chai. Uh, that was Wednesday. On Thursday, we had some birthdays. Uh, Matthew Joplin, 33 years old now, and he still goes around think, still getting drunk, thinking he's about 18 years old. Happy birthday, Matthew. I met him when I was DJing at Heaven about 10 years ago now. That's how long it is ago, Matthew. God, 10 years ago, dear. Matthew uh, was a DJ. So I think he still does occasional little DJ jobs. He's got a job in, um, where do you work now? Asda, don't you? Asda. Asda. Choo, choo. Why do they slap their bums? and they, they get coins, but there's no coins in my butt. Choo, choo. No coins. Asda, money saving. Choo, choo. Do, you have all, do, you, do you all have to do that while you're working when customers walk past? Choo, choo. I might come round and slap your ass as I'm walking past, Matt. <laughs> Which branch do you work on? Tell me and I'll pop in. Happy birthday, Matthew. Happy birthday today to uh, uh, Thursday to Irvin Distiller. One year off 70 now, aren't you, sir? Irvin Distiller pops up now and again. Sometimes rings the live show, sends in the occasional message. Oh, it's nice, always nice to have you as a friend. Irvin Distiller, top radio personality in the US of A. Voiceovers and everything. Irvin, happy birthday to you, sir. Happy birthday today to, uh, sorry, the Thursday to Chris Manning, Manion, I think it's Manion. Beautiful scenic pictures on your Facebook wall, I must say. I did like those beautiful pictures, all scenery and uh, trees. And uh, was, it, was it a waterfall that I can't remember? I think it was a waterfall that I particularly liked. Happy birthday, Chris. Uh, yesterday, <clears throat> it was one of our Fanalo's birthdays, the lovely Anne Taplin. Who I met in, uh, are you, no, yes, it was you, wasn't it? Who I met, it's so complicated, who I met at the O2 just a couple of weeks ago at the Barry Manilow concert. And I gave her a lift home. She's got pink hair at the moment, or it was pink a couple of weeks ago. Pink hair at the moment, which I, I reckon, I reckon because you had pink hair, Manilow, uh, Barry observed that himself. I reckon he quite liked that. Happy birthday, my darling. We did have a nice dinner, didn't we? With our friend Rachel as well, yes. Happy birthday, Anne Taplin. And uh, today, some birthdays today. Happy birthday today to Donna Borg. I like that. I like your surname, Borg. Reminds me of Star Trek, you know. We are Borg. We are Borg. Resistance is futile. Resistance, yes, is futile. Yes, I like, I like that name, Borg. Happy birthday to you, Donna. And happy birthday to Richard Fisher. Uh, Richard, are you the one that used to do the rock radio shows? I can't remember now. Are you, on internet radio, possibly CMP. Uh, I can't remember. Richard, do let me know. Richard Fisher, happy birthday to you, sir. So let me sing to you all, and then we can carry on with our little show, boys and girls. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you happy birthday lovely people happy birthday to you have a lovely day everyone sorry if your birthday's a little bit late there but i've been uh, away on holiday and i couldn't get the birthdays there all right my darlings now i've just been, i was just looking at myself there in the camera there and uh, did i have this shirt on yet i think i had this shirt on yesterday <clears throat> it's not terrible. It's not the same as the thing. Behind. They're little, if you can't quite see, they're little Union Jacks there, you see. Good, isn't it? My friend George uh, uh, found some material. He makes dresses and things like that. And uh, it was him who, who, who introduced me to that uh, little sort of Union Jack material that I have on my back there. We, we kind of change the background every, every, uh, every six months or so. I might keep that one up for a bit longer because that's my favourite background so far. Um... Last lovely night. Uh, my return to work last night was very, very lovely at Central Station in Wharfdale Road. I do karaoke there on Mondays and Fridays. Mondays from 8 o'clock with the cheap drinks and Fridays from 8.30. Very nice night indeed last night. Uh, poor old Jack. 
poor Jack, who, who, who's, who's, who's become a regular viewer to this programme, poor little Jack got split in half at the end of last night. When we were doing our um, live streams, unfortunately, uh, one stream finished halfway through his song. So he was, he was kind of split over two shows. I don't know if you saw it last night. Poor little Jack split in half. Yes. And uh, Mary, Mary, Irish Mary bought me in a bunch of roses from her garden. Beautiful smelling things. And the thing is about roses, you know, when you buy them now in supermarkets and places like that, they look very nice, but they don't smell. They don't have that beautiful rose smell that we all remember as a little, little child. We do. Talking to little children, that's still going through my mind. You know, Harry nearly drowning. My, my nephew's little boy nearly drowning after he decided to suddenly jump in the pool with no armbands on. Three years old. Stupid Harry. I shall remind him of that all the time. Hopefully I'll be at his wedding in 21 years' time. And I shall remind him of the fact that Great Uncle Chris saved his life. Da, 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 da. Is there a badge? Is there a badge that I can be presented with or a small token, a small gift, you know, a, a, a cup that I could display on there? Chris Reardon, lifesaver, as well as everything else now. So it's Chris Reardon, international celebrity, award-winning DJ, landlord, environmental conservationist, pilot, uh, lifesaver, and your fairy godmother. I quite like that. I quite like adding that on there. Um, thank you very much to Mary for the roses and, and two bars of galaxy chocolate. And Mary knows now, Mary knows now uh, not to be clever with the chocolate. And I would advise you the same. Now, don't try and be clever with chocolates, OK? Often, you go and buy this fancy box of dark luxury chocolates from Belgium, or so, which you won't be able to get soon anyway. There's no more stuff coming over from Belgium, I'm afraid. No, nope, we voted out and that's it. No more... <laughs> No more chocolates. Come, besides, it's horrible. It's horrible, isn't it? All Belgian chocolate's the best. No, it isn't. Absolutely not. It used to be Cadbury's. It used to be Cadbury's before they'd done something to that. They swear blind they never change anything, but it's, it tastes different to me. Nope. Galaxy chocolate. <clears throat> if you've got a little event coming up or something, boys and girls, and you want to buy someone a box of chocolates or something like that, don't go spending 30, 40, 50, 100 pounds on, you know, luxury chocolates from Belgium, the best chocolate in the world, because it's not. And even, I tell you what, even worse, I'm sorry, my American friends, I know there are quite a few of you, but even worse than Belgian chocolate is Hershey's. Oh, it's vile. It's absolutely vile. Have you had it before? <clears throat> nice, kind people over the years have sent me a bar or two in the post, and I appreciate you sending me it. But it's horrible. Oh, it's vile. Have you had it? Hershey's chocolates in America. I believe it's America's biggest selling chocolate, but it's absolutely vile. No, you want Galaxy. Galaxy. Oh, it's just so beautiful and nice and milky. And if you just get a little square, put it on your tongue and don't chew. Let it melt in your tongue and your entire mouth has this thin coating of beautiful Galaxy chocolate dripping down into the back of your throat. Isn't that lovely? I do like that galaxy chocolate. Do you like galaxy chocolate? Eh? Thornton's isn't bad either. And I've got a little weakness for fudge. Not, not fudge that's been mucked about with raisins or rum or something. No, just normal vanilla fudge. Oh, it's delicious, delicious, delicious. So if you ever want to send anything in, well, you can't because there's no address anymore. <laughs> If you're ever meeting me somewhere, please bring a small box. Nothing more than five. Nothing more than five kilograms, please, boys and girls. Uh, a small box. I don't know what a kilogram is. I have no. OK, five pounds. OK, nothing more than five pounds uh, worth of fudge in a box. And that will be most appreciated. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so let me see what else happened last night. Oh, Roy took a break from the singing last night. Roy was just watching last night. I think he was resting his voice, the lovely Roy. And uh, was disappointed that Ray Reynolds and who else was it? And Roy, they didn't bring their karaoke badges. In fact, <coughs> Ray Reynolds had the audacity last night, the audacity, to say, have you got any more badges? I've lost mine. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Well, that's nice, Ray. You know, is that, is that how much you appreciate my things? You lost your karaoke badge 
It's no use saying, oh, things get lost. I bet you've never lost your television, have you? Have you ever lost your house or your garden? No. So why have you lost my... You haven't taken care of that badge that I carefully crafted. I carefully crafted by sending 50 quid off somewhere to get a load of them done, dear. And you've lost it. I can't believe it. I can't believe... You're going to have to make a badge, Roy, Ray. Come on, you're sitting at home doing nothing all day long. You can make yourself a karaoke badge. You know the colour? <laughs> the little logo on the side? <clears throat> make make a karaoke but I expect to see one on Monday. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> Ray Reynolds, boys and girls. Superstar extraordinaire. Without ukulele last night. We just had vocals last night. Him and Johnny Key. They just gave us vocals last night. They did that song, When, when I smile, when I smile at you. Ba, ba, ba. And we had London's most favourite bus driver, Alex B. Hello, Alex B. Yes, indeed. Tickets, please. Tickets, please. They don't do that anymore. And there are no tickets. There are no tickets on the buses. It's a bleep with the Oyster card on it. Bleep. Up. Do you know, I don't own an Oyster card. I haven't been on a bus for years. I used to love going on a bus to school. Oh, yes. Yes. Sometimes, sometimes we'd miss it and we'd have to we'd have to walk to school. But it was lovely. And um, it used to go when I used to go to primary school, it used to cost sixpence. Was a sixpence. And one of the conductors <coughs> seemed to be a bit mad and he wouldn't collect the money. Come on, no, I've got no time to collect money. Just get on the bus now. This would have been 19... Oh, 60, 69, 70, 1970, maybe 1971, somewhere around that time. He wouldn't collect the money. You try, and you'd try and get... There you go. Oh, no, I haven't got time to collect money. We're too busy. We're too busy. And he'd be singing on the bus, conductor. I bet they're not like that now. Miserable bastards, all of them, dear. Great big things sitting there and they haven't got time to talk to you or kiss me ass goodbye or anything. Miserable, miserable people, dear. Driving those buses. Have you seen them? I nearly got crushed twice last... Was it last Friday, wasn't it? Nearly got crushed twice by a bus. Really, Some of them are really bad drivers now. They are. Awful. Not like when we were little boys and girls, is it? No. So that was lovely last night. And for my highlight of the light last night was the reappearance of a little lady called Fidela. She's from the Philippines. And I met Fidela oof, some years ago now at Belushi's in Hammersmith. And she I knew her for a few years. And then she disappeared. Uh, so I lost her mobile phone. She lost her mobile phone, I think. And she'd been, she's been in America, apparently, for a while, living. And she turned up last night. She turned up last night and she did... Uh, Dusty Springfield. Da, 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 All I ask of you. And she did Shirley Bassey, Never, Never, Never. And another one. I can't remember the other one. Christina, Christine Pirelli, I think it was. Anyway, it was so nice to see her. And you know, <coughs> when these people, <coughs> when people like that turn up again after you haven't seen them for years and they do the same songs, you can just close your eyes and go back to that time. And she sung it so well. She said she hadn't sung for a long time, but it sounded all right to me, Fidela. Beautiful, you beautiful, beautiful lady. If you're watching this, uh, thank you very much for coming last night. And I hope we have been reconnected and you will carry on entertaining us with your beautiful vocal talents. That's uh, Fidela back yesterday. Now, uh, what's the time? Oh, is it 18 minutes? Have I done that already? Gosh, I didn't know that. Now, here is a little story that attracted my eye, my beady eye was attracted to this story this morning, boys and girls, uh, as uh, I, I've been in a couple of supermarkets recently and felt blooming cold. Has this happened to you? <clears throat> in particular, in particular, the Marks and Spencer's food place in Wokingham. It's like Marks and Spencer's at the, at the front where they do clothes, although not white shirts. Can you believe that? Do you remember I told you a few months ago Marks and Spencers in Wokingham don't sell white long sleeve shirts. Oh, that we can order one in for you. Well, might as well order it off Amazon, Mark and I. Stupid. How can you not stock white long sleeved shirts in, in, in somewhere like Marks and Spencers? Anyway, so you go through there, the clothes area, and they've got, oh, they've got some dear little kiddies jackets, uh, little raincoats, tiny little yellow things, you know, for children. I love them all. Uh, and you go through to the back, and there's the food area. But honestly, and there's a there's a point that you go across, like where the where the baskets are, 
uh, that you do your shopping in. And it's blooming cold. And the whole area is really cold. So that, and, and also the Sainsbury's up the road where I really don't like to go to because they're just miserable gits up there. You know, you don't want to see miserable faces when you're shopping, are you? Um, but it's the same up there, actually. Uh, not so much the whole shop, but mainly in the cool area. Now, I know, I know what you're going, well, what do you expect? That's where the cool food is. You know, I know that. So why isn't it like that in Waitrose? Right, you go in the cold area, but you are not cold. The stuff is cold, but you're not cold. So why is it when I go to Sainsbury's, it's cold? And why is it when I go to Marks and Spencer's, the entire food area is cold there? Now, look at this. In today's Super Sorry Daily Mail, it says, First, they made us endure sweltering heat in winter. This is the supermarkets. Now shoppers are braving temperatures as low as 0.8 degrees centigrade. That, oh, what was that? I just, the, the air conditioning just flicked a piece of paper. Oh, I frightened the life out of me. I thought someone was just, just about to jump down on me, dear. It's a while since that happened. Anyway, now shoppers are ba bracing temperatures as low as 0 0.38 degrees centigrade. That's 33 Fahrenheit in supermarkets colder than parts of the Arctic. Across the country, shops are turning their air conditioning up to full blast in anticipation of sweltering July heat. Are you sure we haven't had any yet? We haven't had any yet, dear. And we're a third of the way through July already. It says the big chill has led to a flurry of complaints from customers clad in summer clothes, some of whom have been digging out their winter coats for the big weekly shop. Yeah, I take a jacket in now. It's so cold in some of these supermarkets. I, I took a coat in there the other day. Visitors to a Tesco in Newcastle upon Tyne endured uh, 0 0.8 degrees centigrade at 33 Fahrenheit, a survey found. Meanwhile, temperatures in Sainsbury's plummeted to 2 degrees and 2.5 and degrees in Marks and Spencer. See, I told you. By comparison, Alaska's northernmost city of Barrow was 4 degrees, which is warmer than these supermarkets. <coughs> it's all very strange. Very strange indeed. Uh, five of the chilies. Ch Tesco in Newcastle. Uh, Waitrose, actually. In New they, these are all in Newcastle, these. Look at these. All these in Newcastle. Tesco, 0 0.8 centigrade. Waitrose, 1.8. Sainsbury's, 2. Marks and Spencer's, 2.5 degrees. So, and when you're coming in from maybe 20 degrees to 2 degrees, that feels extra cold. So I don't know why they're all doing that. I really don't. Does it say, say, say anything else about it? Uh, no, that's it. No, that's it. So I, I can only, it says, um, Mark Snowden, communications executive, says thermal comfort, thermal comfort, where do they come out with all this rubbish? Thermal comfort is, um, uh, is an issue for both shoppers and staff at supermarkets, but it can be difficult to keep the temperature within comfortable limits in a supermarket because of their size on a variety of heating and cooling in different areas. Oh, just shut up and get it sorted out, dear. Christ's sake. You make enough money from all of us, don't you? Shut up and sort it out. Oh, so my advice is take a coat in whenever you're going shopping in future. All right? Okay, that's it today, boys and girls. Uh, tonight, <coughs> Saturday night... I shall be hosting karaoke outside of London tonight in Maidenhead at uh, the Corner House. The Corner House in Maidenhead, which is kind of on the main one-way uh, section, OK? Uh, between 10pm and 2am. Only takes me 20 minutes to get home from there. And it lovely? Oh, when you've been sitting... Although this traffic last night wasn't too bad at all. Getting to work. It could take me two hours to get there. And it took me an hour and 25 last night. So I was pleased about that. But tonight, Saturday night, I shall be hosting karaoke at the Corner House in Maidenhead tonight. Okay, that's between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Apart from that, enjoy your Saturday. Oh, it's 20 to 11. I'm going to get my skates on there because it's time for my water aerobics up at the Hilton Hotel. Cheerio now. Bye-bye.